Hi, I'm Steve Arterburn and welcome to Walking Into Walls. This is our seventh session and today we're going to be dealing with the wall of blind ignorance. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this story. This truly happened to me. I talked with a man who was a Christian, but he said, I don't want to read the Bible anymore because I don't want to be responsible to change anymore. As long as I don't read the Bible, I'm not accountable for anything else to be different in my life. As if the changes that the Bible calls us to are bad for us or something. Well, here was a man that was committed to a life of blind ignorance. And let me tell you something. I don't know of any man I've met that was any more ignorant than that man. He truly was blind. You know, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, we have these blind spots. Uh, I say for some people they're not little spots, they're acres of blindness that we have. And, and many times we don't have anybody in our life to tell us the truth about ourselves. You know, when I think about Elvis Presley and I think about Michael Jackson, I think about two extremely talented people in the area of music. Both of them died because they didn't have anybody near them that was either given permission to tell them the truth or was brave enough to tell them the truth because they would become an outcast if they tried to tell them the truth. And so both of them died earlier than they needed to because there was no one there to hold up a mirror and say, this is who you've become and you will die if you don't make a change. Well, we all have these blind spots, and the question is, do we want to see? Do we want to clear them up? Do we want to rid our life of them? One of my favorite heroes, and probably for you too, is Helen Keller. And she says, one of the saddest things is when a person has eyes, but they're still blind. I believe that that is one of the saddest things that can ever, ever happen. In 12-step work, there's a, a process that you go through to help clear up the, the blindness. And it's called a fearless and searching moral inventory. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but it's the beginning of seeing who you really are. To sit down and write down everything that you can see as an area that might be a defect or needing to be changed. A step beyond that is to ask somebody else to write that same list for you. I remember uh, when I was in my early 40s, I didn't want to go through life the same way that I had. And I called in my best friend and the person that uh, worked closest with me, my wife, and several other associates, and I said, I'm going to leave this room. When I come back, tell me the three things I need to work on. And tell me the three things that I'm really good at so that I'm willing to hear the things that I need to work on. All of us need to find ways where we can see more of the reality of our lives. Then maybe we won't focus so much on the problems and the irritations of other people. Matthew 7, 4 says, How can you think of saying to your friend, Let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Well, there are a lot of people with logs in their eyes walking around and they don't even know they're there and they look pretty ridiculous. So to knock down this wall of blind ignorance, we need to look within ourselves with a humble willingness to see what is there. We need to open ourselves up to let other people tell us the truth about ourselves. And, and we need to pray to God. O oh Lord, the psalmist said, keep me from lying to myself. Maybe it's time to give up the blind ignorance. Stop lying to yourself and see the truth.